6. Steel Reinforcement for Walls Overview Building any structure using ANVIC ICFs requires the installer to have a good knowledge of the fundamentals of steel reinforcement. This part of the manual will discuss the basics of reinforcing steel requirements for ANVIC ICF walls. Planned Requirements The designer, architect, engineer of any project should clearly indicate the following information on his plans. Separate cross-sections of all walls using ANVIC ICF. Each cross-section should clearly show the size of ANVIC ICF block used for the building inspector and installer. Each cross-section should show the wall heights involved in every story. Vertical and horizontal reinforcing steel bar sizes, spacing and grade of steel should be clearly marked for every story in each wall cross-section or in a separate note on other sheets. The placement of reinforcing steel, especially the vertical ones, should be clearly marked off-center or towards interior-exterior or centered in the wall. The designer should specify the lap splice type and lengths for every section of the wall where splicing is anticipated. Please refer to reinforcing steel splicing in section 6.6 .6 of this chapter. The purpose of reinforcing bars. Reinforced concrete structures are composed of two different materials, concrete and steel. Plain concrete is a strong material in compression. Compressing a plain concrete cube or cylinder requires a relatively large amount of compressive force before reaching compression failure. However, plain concrete is relatively weak in tension. Typically, it can only carry one-tenth of its compression strength in tension. Reinforcing steel has excellent strength in both compression and tension loads, but is more expensive than concrete. Therefore, reinforced concrete structures are typically designed by engineers such that concrete is mainly utilized for most of the compressive forces and reinforcing steel is utilized for all of the tensile forces and, in some cases, some of the compressive forces. The design of reinforced concrete structures have been streamlined particularly over the last century for safety as well as economic feasibility. Reinforced concrete structures have had a tremendous track record in some of the most complicated structures, including dams, bridges, and high-rise buildings across the globe. Horizontal Reinforcement ANVIC polypropylene webs are specifically designed to accommodate and secure the horizontal reinforcing steel in place without the need to tie them. Typically, the first course of horizontal reinforcement is placed in the notches closer to the EPS panel. The second course of horizontal reinforcement is staggered so that it is placed in the notch towards the center of the concrete wall. The third course is placed in the same position as the first course. The fourth course is placed in the same position as the second. This staggered pattern of horizontal reinforcement is necessary to allow for the vertical reinforcement to be placed from the top and weave in between the horizontal steel bars. Figures 6.1 and 6.2 show typical vertical and horizontal reinforcing patterns for below-grade and above-grade applications using 8-inch AMVIC ICF block respectfully. Vertical Reinforcement Vertical reinforcement is placed after the AMVIC ICF wall has been stacked and completely erected. In case of a multi-story wall, then the vertical reinforcement is placed after the erection of each individual story. Vertical reinforcement bars are slid into place from the top and weaved into the horizontal reinforcement and secured into the proper place according to the project plans and specs. Reinforcement for wall openings. Most walls will have window or door openings or both. Creating a wall opening in a reinforced concrete wall creates extra stress around that opening, especially at the corners. Window and door headers, also known as lintels, can be subjected to significant bending moment and shear forces depending on several factors. Refer to Appendix A for more details on how to handle reinforcement in wall openings. Reinforcement splicing. Steel reinforcement typically comes in 20-foot lengths. In such cases where steel reinforcement is required to exceed this length, then a splice is required. The main purpose of the splice is to transform the stresses, whether tensile or compression, from one steel reinforcing bar or a group of bundled bars to another in a manner to satisfy the governing local building engineering codes and or requirements of engineering plans and specs. Types of lap splice. For the purpose and scope of this manual, we'll only discuss one type of splicing, known as lap splicing. Lap splicing is typically overlapping reinforcing steel over a certain length. The length of the splice should be calculated according to the local building codes or by a local engineer and specified on the project plans. There are two main types of lap splices. Contact lap splice. The lapped reinforcing bars must be in contact with each other and secured together. And non-contact lap splice where the reinforcing bars are allowed to be spaced at a distance of one-fifth of the lapped length to a maximum of 150 millimeters or 6 inches. 
Minimum requirement for lap splice length. Both types of lap splices have a minimum splice length requirement as follows. The minimum lap splice length equals 40 times the reinforcing steel bar diameter. When splicing a number 5 reinforcing steel bar which has a diameter of 0.625 inches, the minimum lap splice length is 25 inches. When splicing a 10M reinforcing steel bar which has a diameter of 11.3 millimeters, the minimum lapped splice length is 452 millimeters. Lapped splices for multiple concrete pours. When a project has more than one story of AMVIC ICF walls, it is necessary for the installer to understand how to perform vertical reinforcement lap splices between the different pours. There are two options, both of which are satisfactory from an engineering structural standpoint. Option one, extend the vertical reinforcement steel bars beyond the top level of the lower story. The length of the extension should be equal to the required splice length specified by the design engineer or a minimum length of 40D. Please refer to figure 6.5 for typical details. Option 2. Cut the vertical reinforcement steel bars for the lower story so that they are flush with the top of that wall. Shortly after pouring the concrete, wet set additional vertical reinforcing bars, also known as dowels, into the concrete. These should extend into the freshly poured wall a length equal to the splice length specified by the design engineer or a minimum length of 40D. The wet set vertical splice reinforcing steel bars should also protrude into the upper wall by the same splice length specified by the design engineer or 40D as a minimum. Please refer to figure 6.6. .6. Designing reinforcing steel for walls. Determining the reinforcing steel schedule, whether vertical or horizontal, is a structural engineering task which depends on many factors. This is beyond the scope of this technical manual, however some tools are available for the residential construction market to assist in reinforcing steel design. Here the tools are explained. CCMC Report number 13043-R contains reinforcing steel tables for below grade and up to two stories of above grade applications in residential projects. The report also contains some lintel tables for wall openings both in metric and imperial units. There are applicability limits mentioned in the report which must be adhered to. If the particular project at hand falls outside of these limits, then a local licensed registered engineer should be retained. The National Association of Home Builders, in association with the Portland Cement Association, have prepared the prescriptive method for insulating concrete forms in residential construction, specifically for the ICF industry. This document contains reinforcing steel schedules for below grade and up to two story above grade applications. It also contains several lintel tables for wall openings in different applications. As expected, there are limitations which must be adhered to. For applications that fall outside the scope of the prescriptive method, a local licensed registered engineer should be retained. Portland Cement Association has prepared another tool for engineers to assist in the design of ICF walls. Structural Design of Insulating Concrete Form Walls in Residential Construction, Reference 2. This publication explains in more detail the engineering principles involved in design load-bearing and non-load-bearing ICF walls, even for walls outside the scope of the prescriptive method. Steel Reinforcing Bars and Job Site Safety Unguarded protruding steel reinforcing bars are hazardous and can result in injury or death. The following measures greatly reduce the hazards of exposed reinforcing steel. Guard all protruding ends of reinforcing steel bars with caps or wooden troughs, or bend reinforcing steel so exposed ends are no longer upright. When employees are working at any height above exposed rebar, fall protection prevention is the first line of defense against impalement. According to Occupational Safety and Health Administration USA Article 1926.701, the following clause shall apply to the job site. All protruding reinforcing steel onto and into which employees could fall shall be guarded to eliminate the hazard of impalement. A similar compliance clause is present in the Occupational Health and Safety Act in Canada.